Hey, pals, just want to say thanks to our listeners who are supporting independent podcasters just like Go With The Heat. You make this show possible by hanging out with us each and every week, and we love you for it. If you'd like to show some additional support, please head over to your podcast platform of choice and give us a review. And I'm going to say, give us a five-star review. You do what you want. I'm just going to ask for a five-star review. Now let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about season three, episode 21, titled Knock Knock, Who's There? I don't like this I title. I think we're going backwards on name titles now. <laughs> yeah. like, this is going back. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't even make sense to the actual episode. It's getting lazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It originally premiered on March 27th, 1987. Surprise, it's written by Dick Wolf. You should just stop saying that because we already know all of them are in <laughs> It's directed wait by... for you to go like... This one is written by Michael Mann. <laughs> when did he come back? It is directed by Tony Warmby. He doesn't have anything else to vice credit. He directed some random TV episodes here and there. So it's okay. We can be a little hard on this one, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't come back. We don't have to talk about him again. <laughs> I think we're going to be in agreement on this one, that this is another one of those middle of the road vice episodes just getting ready for the end of season three. I think we are. I have a long stare happening to me to the left. <laughs> you may be right. <laughs> I think you may be right. <laughs> All right, John, we got some merengue. We got some new people. We got some old people. This is a big music segment. What do you got for us this week? All right. So we have some reoccurring. We have some we'll meet later. We have some that, well... Just not a lot of info on. And then we have a fantastic Canadian genius. So let's get started here. We'll start with Dire Straits right across the river. We covered them pretty extensively back in the music for the Brother of Arms. Money for Nothing was their big hit if you didn't if you didn't catch the music from that episode. Something that you might not have known about that was that Sting from the police co-wrote the song and also appeared as a uh, backing vocals. So mm. we'll, we're going to just gr- move right along. We're going to go to Santiago by Fernando I- Villona. That sounds right. He's a Dominican merengue singer. We actually have seen him before. He was in season, in this season, episode 11's music for Forgive Us Our Debts. I knew that. I didn't forget about that. I recognize (laughs) that name. (laughs) If you want to hear more about him, go back and check out our episode 11 show from season three uh, just a few weeks ago. We're going to move right along and we're going to get to La Cena by... Belkis Concepcion Isus Chicas. Sean, that was I have no idea if I got it right. I, 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 I'm going to call it you got it right and actually a standing clap. Yep, for, <laughs> that was a hard for, one. For that name, because they set you up big time on that one. <laughs> yes, yes. Belkis is a hard one to find info for. She's mainly known because she was the founding member of all female Dominican merengue band called Las Chicas del Can. Now, Wikipedia and certain other other biographies Wikipedia says that that she was with the band from their inception in 82 but another bio i read said that she actually put the band uh, started the band in 1976 as the lead singer and pianist and now they make a pretty pretty big statement in the next one they also said that it was the first all-female merengue group in dominican history and i don't know i mean in all of history yeah i mean <laughs> that's a pretty <laughs> profound statement that's one of those statements was like yes. me wrong so <laughs> so she would start the band in 1976 and about and actually the band was originally called las chicas but about five years later Wilfredo vargas would become the producer and he would add del con right around about a year into their him producing them belkis would get sick and he would actually replace her with a 14 year old named miriam cruz at first she would just fill in but by 1984 she would completely replace belkis belkis would try and go solo and from 85 to 90 she would release five albums and see middling success but no real chart toppers her only real song that would chart during that time would be El Hombre Que Yo Amo, uh, which would make it to number seven on, I, I guess, the Merengue charts in February of 1990. <laughs> um, I can't really find anything on her since 1990. You would not believe how many Belkis Concepcion's 
or on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Our next song is The Water Boys by Shriekback. And Shriekback will be reappearing in a future episode called Baseballs of Death, which <laughs> just sounds like a Best fantastic episode. I can't wait for that one. <laughs> They're an English rock band. They released five albums from 81 to 89 with, and I'm quoting here, with li- little to no success. So, but we will <laughs> so, we'll talk more about them. So and they're the related to that Michael Mann. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that Michael Mann the, uh, must have been a fan of them because he also used some of their music on his Manhunter soundtrack. That brings us to the song The Fashion Show by Grace Jones. Grace Jones is a Jamaican singer, actress, supermodel, record producer. Her and her family moved to Syracuse, New York when she was 13, and she would start modeling in New York, and she would just be big time after that. In 1977, she would secure a record deal with Island Records, initially becoming a star of the New York Studio 54 disco-centered scene. Early 80s, she would move kind of toward, more toward New Wave, and she would collaborate frequently with a... Vice music favorite, Sly and Robbie, seeing success uh, in the 80s would also propel her acting career. She would start in some very low-budget films before making her first mainstream appearance as Zula in Conan the Barbarian in 1984. The next year, she would follow that up with 1985's James Bond flick, A View to Kill. A side note, during that time, when she was when she was starring in the James Bond movie, she was dating Swedish actor Dolph Lundgren. I, that's how I knew her. <laughs> she was dating Dolph Lundgren for like four years or something. <laughs> just every morning. She, she probably got tired of her after a while. Just every morning. Every conversation. You want some eggs? If they die, they die. <laughs> I'm tired of the money. <laughs> I'm going out with Bill today. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> he started out as her bodyguard. All right. Mm. Yeah. So now I'm going to try your mind here. Dolph Lundgren was Grace Jones' bodyguard. That's how she stood out. So let me explain to you the situation. Dolph Lundgren had just gotten a master's in chemical engineering and received a Fulbright scholarship to MIT. He moved to Boston. But Grace Jones would convince him to leave school and move to New York with her. He would become her bodyguard, and she would get him a role in the James Bond flick she was in, A View to Kill. Very next role would be Rocky. Damn. Damn. Yes. If it wasn't for Grace Jones, Dolph Lundgren does not make it to Rocky. He probably isn't even an actor. He's probably some rocket scientist. I think all the cool rocket shit we could have got out of Dolph Lundgren he he wasted his time being an actor. He had a fellowship. He was going to have a fellowship at like some crazy college, like Harvard or something like that. And he passed it all up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he passed it all up so that he could go with her to go, like she was going to go model and stuff. And then he was just going to go ride her on the back of her motorcycle. That's what he said. <laughs> I, re- I watched an interview with him. You know, he still uh-huh. gets teaches at college. She would go from 85's Bond flick to 86's Vampire flick, Vamp. She would also provide music for that movie. In 92, she would do Boomerang with Eddie Murphy. She would also put music on the, that soundtrack. And that would kind of become a trend. In the 90s, she did. She would do more soundtrack work. As recent as The Hunger Games. So, hmm. like, even now. She's still doing soundtrack work. In 2017, she collaborated with the band Gorillaz on the song Charger for their fifth album, Humans. So she is still in the studio as well. After all of that, what what more can we have on the music? Well, we have Heat of the Night by Brian Adams, a Canadian superstar. <laughs> now listen, listen. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. <laughs> listen, there's the 80s and there's music in the 80s. And I, Melissa, I know we've been married for a long time, but I have to, I have to admit something to you. I gave my heart to Brian Adams years <laughs> before we met. <laughs> I, I love me some Brian Adams. <laughs> Which is funny because I love the 80s and I'm like, eh, Brian Adams is okay. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian Adams began playing nightclubs at 15 years old. By the time he was 17, he was working as a backup vocalist for a Vancouver studio. In 1976, he became the lead singer of a band called Sweeney Todd. And even though, even after some mild success, he would leave after less than one year, he would spend some time in in some cover bands. At this time, he would meet longtime friend and fellow guitarist Keith Scott, 
And then at 18, in 1978, he would meet Jim Valance, the former drummer and, and songwriter for the band Prism. So he had recently quit Prism. The two met a few days later, meet up at Vance's home studio, and basically be working together ever since. Brian Adams' career, all of his songs, are Jim Valance basically co-wrote all of his songs with him. They've basically been working together writing songs ever since then. And not just songs for Brian Adams. They co-wrote songs for other artists too they coach adams co-wrote songs for bonnie rat roger daltrey as well as doing a ton of soundtrack work himself with songs like all for love which he wrote and then performed with god stewart and sting for the three musketeers soundtrack other songs that he would do for soundtracks everything i do i do it for you off of 91's waking up the neighbors would be featured on the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves soundtrack. Have You Ever Really Loved a Woman would be featured in the movie Don Juan DeMarco. And that's just to name a few. He has so many awards and he has uh, just so much successful stuff. On a side note, one of his biggest songs, Please Forgive Me, off of 93, So Far So Good. One of my favorite things is the video of that song in, in like a studio session. And there's this German Shepherd that's like right by his side. And, and during the filming video, the German Shepherd's actually the producer's dog. The dog liked Brian Adams so much, he wouldn't leave his side the whole time he was recording. And so the <laughs> dog just ends up in the video. All that aside, I pretty much ran through just about everything as far as all of his big hits. He's, he's had Summer of 69. 1984's Reckless was pretty much his breakout album. Couple more little things that you might not know. In 1990, he voiced the evil rat henchman Hoodwink in the Canadian TV special, The Real Story of the Three Little Kittens. That sounds he very also, Canadian. <laughs> let, let's try, if we can't get it even more Canadian, Adams also performed at Wayne Gretzky's final game in 1999 at Madison Square Garden. Above all of that, he is also an avid photographer. He has been mm. published in magazines like Vogue, Vanity Fair, DQ, Esquire, as, lo- as well as having a ton of showings and galleries. What I'm saying here is that in we like to poke fun at Canada, right? So we like to have some fun. What I'm saying is that there's only two Canadian national heroes that they on their Mount Rushmore. There's Terry Fox, the man who ran over 3,000 miles across Canada yes. to raise money for charity. And then there's Brian Adams. That's it. That's all you need to know about Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I think Canada would put up a fight on that. but <laughs> I also learned a lot about Grace Jones, who I had to go look up while John was talking about her. <laughs> you did not know who Grace Jones was? Like, really? No, I did not know. And when you mentioned her in the episode, like, you saw that Grace Jones was involved. I'm like, uh, I'll have to look that one up later. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go get our final thoughts on this episode. The music is his own animal in this, because I would say the music far outperforms the episode. Yes, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go break down our final thoughts on this episode. And that's going to do it for us this week, pals. We hope you enjoy this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love, 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 love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com or tweet at us at Go With The Heat. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Go With The Heat. Pretty much anywhere you want to look for us, you can find us slash or at or whatever, Go With The Heat. And you know what would also help us too? It's the season of giving, pals. We love you. We love that you listen to us every single week. We love that there's other people who love Miami Vice just as much as we do. Please, for Christmas, <laughs> think think of little Brian. Go <laughs> to your hospital <laughs> bed. <laughs> go to your pod catcher choice and give us a five star review. You don't have to give us five stars. I'm just joking about that. But just please give us a review. Go to that platform and give us a review. Go to iTunes. Go to Google Music. Go to TuneIn. Wherever you happen to listen, go ahead and give us a review. Good, bad, however you want it to be. We would love for you to go leave us a review. It helps people find the show. shows that people are listening. It would really help us out. That is going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.